Hey YouTube, it's Logan with Hideaway Homestead coming back to you with another video. I wanted to talk a little bit about spiderwort or Virginia spiderwort. It's a native plant here to the uh, southeast U.S. And uh, the scientific name, you'll have to excuse me, I'm probably going to butcher this. had to look it up. It's uh, Tridescantia virginiana. Tridescantia virginiana. So, yeah, that's the best pronunciation I'm going to get on that one. I normally have to listen to people in audiobooks pronounce the scientific name to be able to memorize it. So, I'm doing the best I can on that. But this plant is absolutely awesome. It's actually edible. You can cook it and eat it. I've never tried it, but uh, I've found that a lot of plants that are edible that you can cook, it's kind of a Great Depression type thing. Uh, not all of them is just as delicious as some people want to let on, but... I can't speak to spider wart because I haven't actually tried it. But one thing that I was interested in once I found out that it was edible was whether or not I could feed it to my rabbits. So I looked it up to try to make sure that it was safe for my rabbits. And uh, turns out it is. And I've given it to my rabbits. And after that, I was curious to find out, you know, what the protein content was of the leaves and the stems. But I couldn't find anything. But one thing I had always noticed is in the spring, today's uh, not really a good day for it. It's normally in the early, early morning that I see this. But on their little flowers, you'll see just tons of bumblebees. And uh, bumblebees, you know, being the little fuzzy ones, not the uh, big carpenter bees, but it, it just attracts tons of bumblebees. And I thought that was really interesting. Well, when I was looking for the protein content of this plant, it turns out that bumblebees prefer this plant and this flower because the nectar and I think it's the pollen as well is really high in protein so it makes me assume that this is actually a pretty decent um, plant for you know giving your rabbits a little extra protein and fiber so it's one that I wouldn't feed just all the time but it's, uh, it's definitely something you could add to the rotation on uh, your rabbit feed so I'm going to get out my uh, knife here and cut some of this down and uh, let's go give it to the rabbits and see how they like it. All right, I'm going to do my best here to video and do a little bit of cutting. One thing that I forgot to mention about this plant is that it is extremely shade tolerant. Um, sorry about my finger there, but if you look, you can see right here that it's under this huge, I mean, truly massive sweet gum. So this area gets a lot of shade. It's uh, not shaded all day long. Um, but, you know, I mean, it gets just maybe a couple hours of morning sun in the summertime. So not a whole lot. And this plant really seems to thrive. So now that we got that cut, let's go give some to the rabbits. All right, here we are at the rabbit cages, and uh, here we go, one hand and everything again. As you can tell, now the rabbits, their hopper here is full of feed. You can see, but they know that I've got something green for them, so they're leaning out trying to get a hold of it. So let's put this in here and see what the rabbits think of it. This is a little bit taller than I normally give to them. So there's a chance that they may not like it as much. It may not be as palatable as the young shoots, but uh, we're gonna say, oh, nope, looks like we are enjoying it. Oh yeah. And as you can see, I haven't put any in the other rabbit's cage and they're trying to eat it through the wire. <laughs> so, I mean, this stuff's just incredibly easy to grow. If you can find some on the side of the road or if you know somebody that has it, just get you a couple of plants and Put it somewhere where you want that to grow and you will have spider wart until you die. It's an excellent, excellent plant and excellent for pollinators too. I just love in the springtime how, how many pollinators come out and pull off this little flower head here. As you can see, it blooms for a very extended period of time. Let's see if I can get to the focus. So you've got one flower there. As you can see, this top part, which I think is where it gets its name, the spider wart, that kind of looks like a spider with its legs dangling there. But you can see just how many buds 
are on the end of this stem and those buds bloom out um, just little by little. You'll maybe see one, two, three at a time and it's just an excellent plant. Um, I've done a little bit of research on it and I can't remember exactly everything that I read, but I know it had some uh, medicinal properties to it. I think it was good for breastfeeding mothers, I wanna say. So let me check on that real quick and I'll have you some more facts on that. So it's a good thing I looked it up. I had it confused with another plant. Um, it doesn't say anything about helping breastfeeding mothers, but um, it does say it was made into a tea to ease stomach aches and constipation. And it says it is used as part of a tea with other herbs for kidney issues. Let's see here. Let's see here. Ailments or rupture related to the uterus. So maybe that's where I got the breastfeeding from. But uh, definitely a medicinal plant as well. So certainly can't hurt to give your animals medicinal plants. I'm not an herbalist, so um, my knowledge on a lot of those medicinal uses of plants are, are it's fairly limited. Most of my focus is on the qualities for uh, fodder for animals. So yeah, but just looking up here, uh, that's all I could see as far as health benefits. So that may interest you as well. Uh, to finish out the video, if you like this, just give me a like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you uh, have any questions, or if you'd like to comment on this plant or uh, anything else you might have to say. Uh, appreciate you watching.